Welcome to another episode of 420 Grams here on newsclick.in. It's Eid for those of you celebrating Happy Eid. Uh, it's also the 5th of June, World Environment Day, so lots of lots to introspect on there. And India double header on this holiday. Hmm. Uh, at the ICC World Cup, we take on South Africa in the cricket. And of course, in the football, we're at the 47th Kings Cup in Thailand, where India just played a 3-1 defeat to Curaçao. Hmm. Pandit is in studio. What? How is? What's your assessment of the game? I wasn't expecting that positive and energetic uh, introduction from you, given to what happened to India right now in uh, Buriram. The boys have showed up, man. You got to show some spirit. Okay, yeah, okay. B because honestly, if you if you look back at that game, the 90 minutes versus Gorasau, uh, you'd have to say if you sum it up in a single word, then bittersweet is the right way to sum it up. Let's first talk about the positives, because uh, in the positives, all the new boys, as many I think five. Uh, India babies. caps were handed out today and of those five, at least three of them really stamped their authority in the international arena. You know, uh, these are boys who have been plucked from the ISL, who've only played I-League prior to this. Say, someone like a Sahel, mm -hmm. who was the standout player uh, amongst all the new boys who were playing today. And uh, for me also, not just the new boys who were playing. Overall. Uh, overall. Uh, in the entire team, Sahel was the standout player. Then there was Brandon Fernandez, who showed us how good he is, especially on the wings, but when he was brought into the centre, told us, you know, what he can do in the centre with that quick thinking, with the quick feet and, you know, getting out of those tight spaces. And of course, in the second half, you saw Rainier Fernandez coming in. And uh, Rainier, of course, was an ex-Mohan Bagan player, Mumbai City FC in the ISL. And uh, Rainier also looked pretty good and solid on the ball. Take nothing away from Amarjeet Singh, mm. who was pretty frail as far as his body is concerned. As soon as he came in first five, six minutes, I think he was thrown off the ball by the physically tough Kurosawa players. But he too, Looked like he was, you know, he knew what he was doing, he knew where he was going, asking for the ball, making the ball move around. And uh, so for us, that of course was the big positive. Those four or five boys and uh, the way they were connecting with each other, quick passes, you know, uh, keeping the ball on the ground. Not too many of the long balls that we've got accustomed to seeing India play in the last four or five years. Yeah. So that was a big, big positive. But yeah. the negatives now. And the negatives being that if the positive was from the middle of the park, the negatives were right on top, where as far as our striking is striking. concerned. Mm -hmm. And of course, right at the back, where our uh, defence is concerned. First, yeah. the defence. Uh, I think both of us are uh, in agreement with the fact that Rahul Bheke is not a stopper back. Right? We've tried him in a stopper back position in the ISL, but the ISL is very different from uh, playing international football. Especially against a strong team such as this. I think uh, most of you who've been following the football will know this by Nakurasau are uh, quite an accomplished team. It's almost like playing a, against a European side because all of their players or most of their players are accustomed to playing in Europe uh, week in, week out hmm. at the league level. And a very strong Dutch yeah. influence there. So good coaching systems, I'm sure. Good, uh, you know, uh, de player development processes in place over there. So and an extremely physical side as we saw. Yeah. And, and it was that physicality that was getting the better of someone like Rahul Bheke, yeah. even Sandesh for that matter, you know, yeah. because whenever you talk about a stopper back, what they were doing was that a majority of the balls that were played to the striker up front, mm. how many times were those 50-50 uh, balls that were played, mm. they were won by Rahul or Sandesh. Mm. In the Asian Cup, when you saw Sandesh and Anas playing together, yeah. one of the reasons why they were standing out was because those 50-50 balls, they were, they were coming ahead of their strikers and winning those yeah. balls. Yeah. Versus Kurosawa, that was not happening at all. So as a result, the striker was getting the ball, Defender is coming on to him late. Yeah. He's come on late, and someone is already making a run from him behind. And I think two of our two of Kurosawa's goals came in that fashion only. Mm. The second one, especially when as soon as India had equalized, uh, not uh, equalized, got one back, got one back courtesy yeah. Chetri's penalty. penalty. Then came the long ball. The you know striker hit it down. One guy made the run from the yeah. flank and yeah. goal. Yeah. So th that that's that's a major issue for me. Also, another one being the striking department here yeah, because I don't think Sunil Chetri is being used to his fullest. And he's not giving the maximum that he can to this team if you play him as a lone striker. I think you're some way or the other diminishing his ability and capability to influence the game. game yeah. Yeah. The effectiveness and also the impact that he has on overall on the team, hmm. which I think for a player like Sunil Shetri is far more important than whatever limited role he might have as an individual player, how he makes the attack sort of come together. Yeah. In a sense, in a way, playing like the forward was playing for Kurosawa as well in terms of making those angles and yeah. allowing the run-in for, for for the supporting players. The only thing is that, you know, uh, Sunil, that is not his strongest yeah. quality. Yeah. Back against the goal, fine, he can always keep the ball, but mm. back against the goal is not his strongest quality. Someone 
needs to be ahead of Sunil. He needs yeah. to be in that playing in between the lines area yeah. where he can come and influence the game, do a turn here, a turn there. And, and completely open up the game space, like that. Yeah. Something that Sahel was doing really well, really you know, well. like in those tight spaces. You saw Sahel whenever he was going in. How many times did the boy lose the ball? I don't no. think we saw yeah, him yeah, losing the ball too many ball, times. But not too many times. Not yeah. too many times. Considering how much of the ball he actually had. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, in the in the first 15 minutes, I think Renedi Singh called it very well, where he said while co on commentary was that Sahel needs to be very careful in the way he's using up his energy because towards the end of the first half. Then you saw him sort of dropping off a little bit because also at that time Kurosawa was really, really dominating pushing. on yeah. us. But yeah. then he came into his own in the second half, and in the second half, that performance for me, Igor's team match when he's going back to the drawing board today, mm -hmm. and when he's going to write positives, Sahel will be right on, on top. top because he's given you something you probably don't have. And I think Anirudh Thapa, man, his place in this side is now under serious threat. So mm -hmm. Sahel, Rainier Fernandez, but Sunil, we need to find a striker, yar. Striker, hamar pas hai nahi abhi, yar. Pranay Haldar is a player that we had talked about is in fact being among close to those who would be on the first names on the list. Hmm. He was a bit of a missing entity today also, you know, in yeah. that central midfield, holding midfield, whatever position. You yeah, because you know, also what we saw was that like uh, whenever India had the ball, uh, Pranay was going right in the middle. Uh, Sandesh was opening up on the right and Bheke was on the left and the fullbacks were of course being asked to bombard forward. As a result, which is fine, which you see oh, happening a lot in international football, European football as well and mm. it's, it's a step forward. Mm. But as a result, whenever you would lose the ball, because of that gap, because Pranay is at the back, yeah. he is not being able to cover Come that up. gap quickly. Yeah. And as a result, in the counter, Kurosawa were getting their players over there, easily winning the ball there taking one or two touches and gaps are opening up uh, in you know in that process so pranoy haldar i don't know yaar i mean uh, i still think he will be on uh, the team sheet because there is no midfield enforcer as such but then what rainier has shown today he doesn't really have the physicality but the way he was moving on the ball, hmm. uh, but <coughs> take nothing away from Pranoy from the fact that uh, Kurosawa stepped up, uh, sort of dropped gears dropped in the second in half. The second half yeah. So they weren't really enforcing themselves that much uh, yeah. on the Indian players as much as they must have done on the likes of Pranoy and Brandon in the, in the middle, first yeah. in the first half. Yeah. Brandon was really a breath of fresh air, man. Because mm. uh, if any of you remember, uh, Alex Oxlade Chamberlain. It's basically what I'm trying to say is when a winger is asked to play in the centre. <laughs> <laughs> but but Alex Oxlade Chamberlain, yeah, like it's when a winger is asked to play in the centre. A winger is used to operating in tight spaces. A winger is used to making quick decisions because you don't have much time on the ball. And the same qualities if you put into a player in the centre who mm. generally takes more time on the ball is yeah. a little more laxed. Yeah. Brandon gave us the exact opposite. He was quick, got the ball, turned, moved, moved the ball forward. Mm. How many times Brandon was never passing the ball at the back? He's always turning, quick one touch and moving Maybe the ball forward, forward and you know trying to make space again. Yeah. So that was a serious uh, positive for us. Mm. But uh, really, I think it all boils down to uh, what happens for India in the next match now. Uh, does he? Who does he play in defence? Uh, as far as our defence is concerned, Preetam Sandesh, Subhashish Roy, Subhashish Roy, Subhashish Bosh, Subhashish Bosh, and of course uh, there's Rahul Bheke. Not too many defenders. I think we might. Yeah, see we don't have too many options. I. Uh, I, I feel like it might be one of those situations where the coach decides to use up as much of his squad as possible, hmm. give all of the boys or as many of the boys as possible playing time, uh, actual match time. Uh, we are playing Vietnam next, which will be another interesting, That's a Vietnam interesting game. Thailand. This is true. Sorry, <laughs> my mistake. Yeah. yeah. Well, in all likelihood, well, it, seems yeah, like, it seems like Thailand should beat Vietnam. Either way, it will be an interesting encounter. Thailand, interesting because they've got as far as I think the quarters at the Asian Cup. So they're a good emerging nation. They, In fact, their uh, National League was the league that beat the I League out as the best developing league in Asia last year. Hmm. Uh, Vietnam? Yeah. Vietnam. Okay. Yeah. So it's a good emerging country, technically very good players, very quick players. Good on the ball. But, but not sort of the same sort of physicality that Kurosawa presented. Hmm. And the same applies for Thailand, of course, who we played at the Asian Cup and beat in that phenomenal game 4-1 at Thailand. So, yes. so either of those two games will present a really interesting proposition for India and a chance to perhaps operate on, more, on a, maybe not a level playing field, but a slightly more realistic playing field where Compared to Kurosawa, which I think other who I think are the strongest team in this tournament. Agreed. I, you know, and while uh, we've been praising the midfield for what they were doing going in front, uh, take nothing away from the fact that they were uh, missing in the game as far as their defensive duties were concerned. Mm. They were finding so much space, uh, yeah. not just. 
the midfielders were not close to their men. Hmm. As a result, the defence had to come in front. The defence was being a little, little iffy in coming in front. Hmm. So as a result, that space between midfield between and defence, the there was so much space for Kurosawa to you know take take a part. And uh, as a result, they kept on easily moving the ball around. Towards the end of the game, you saw how they kept the ball. I think throughout the extra time, because no one was, time, coming, yeah. no one was yeah. coming near them. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that for us is a real problem going forward. I think it was a real positive, but in defence. Who is going to enforce? Who is going to tackle? Who is going to get the ball back? If that is not sorted, then whatever you're doing in front doesn't really count for much. Much. I want to take a minute to talk about the few chances that India did have because, the po like we said, the positives, some of the positives to emerge from the situation is going forward. Uh, Udanta had a great chance in the first half, which he decided to take on his left instead of his right, and hmm. uh, then there was uh, Chetri had a header uh, right at the penalty spot towards the end of the game. Amarjit Kiam had a chance at the end of a really nicely worked move through the middle again where, with Brandon and Sahel involved and then uh, Kiam finding himself coming into space from, from yeah. a slightly withdrawn position yeah, on his and getting the ball right? in the box, yeah. just not able to get it out of his feet in time yeah. and get a proper shot off. But uh, Chetri hit, hitting the post. So three, four clear-cut chances there for India. Uh, what do you make of uh, this sort of attacking momentum and also, the way they are playing, keeping the ball on the ground, doing that little yeah, passing. Yeah, couple of things, man. Uh, <coughs> how you've made these moves happen is a major, major plus for India, that you've kept the ball on the ground. And what the coach had said is what he expects from the Indian team going forward is quick passing. So, if you saw, the characteristic of all these moves was that nobody kept the ball for more than two touches. Yeah. One, two touches and you've got an option coming up, either chain the side or you either move it in one, two play. Which was fine, but it all boils down to, aage ja ke goal kaun marega? Who is going to finish that move off? Hmm. Which is why I'm saying the defence and striking hmm. is a major, major uh, cause of worry for the Indian team going forward. And this is something Igor Stimach needs to address. Look, let's not forget it's only his first game. First game. He's only yeah. had 10 days with the team. So, of course, he needs some more time with the team. He's going to be, I'm, my guess is he's going to be looking at a few more players in these positions. That being the stopper back oh, yeah. and the striking position. And you should probably instead, hopefully, by the end of the Intercontinental Cup, which is uh, mid-July, hmm. hopefully he should have sorted out these issues because that's when, after which our World Cup qualifiers, qualifiers begin. Start. So we would have played, I think, a good six, seven matches by then. Hmm. So if by then he can figure it out, then nothing like it. So yeah. six, seven matches should give you ample amount of time also. Hmm. And a month and a half should give you ample amount of time to sort that uh, scene sure. out. Yeah, quick reminder for, for all the football fans out there. Um, this is... Uh, uh, today is, in fact, the day when the World Cup qualifiers for Asia for 2026 are beginning. Is it 2026 or 22? I'm not sure, but we'll clarify that. 2026. But either way, the World Cup qualifiers first round are beginning and because India are now ranked 16 in the top 16 in Asia, we get to skip past the first round. So we're not playing the first round. We go straight into the second round of qualifiers, which is a, a step in hmm. the right direction. And, and hopefully, I think... G given the groupings and things like that, we should be able to make it through out of the second round. That is the immediate game that uh, the goal that the coach will have. And these are also remember the qualifiers for the next Asian Cup. Hmm. So so that's a big tournament coming up, and that'll tournament in the sense qualifying rounds, which will last all the way till. Hmm. Next year. Just a word out to all the people watching. Uh, generally, you know, you look for a reaction from your team after a loss like that. Don't expect too much of a reaction in the next match because I think in the next match, like you said earlier, he's going to be trying out more players. So right now is just a phase of trial and error. He's Absolutely. seeing how every player is sort of finding himself in that arena, the international arena, how he plays, how how much confidence and composure the player shows. So I don't think that is the right time to see how his team is really progressing. Give him time till the end of the Intercontinental Cup. Once the Intercontinental Cup is done, I think is when he should be narrowing down to his 18, his mm. top 18 for who should be taking the Indian team forward, forward as far as the senior team is concerned. And putting together maybe a larger group of players to constantly be competing in, uh, for yeah. those positions in the final squad and uh, in the camp as well. So on that note, I think we'll wind up this quick recap of India, uh, Kurosawa versus India from the Kings Cup. We'll be back with a preview of the next game. Uh, actually, this is kind of a preview of the next game as well. Hmm. Uh, so, India versus either Thailand or Vietnam on June the 8th. We'll be live blogging that game as we were this game. So, join us on newsclick.in and keep following 420 grams. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good week.